I did post videos about uh, from last semester about developing sites for mobile, uh, and I hope you've watched them. Uh, I do. I, I will spend a little bit of time talking about those um, in, in class today. Uh, the the idea is is that if you, you know we'll we'll, we'll 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 fast forward through the overview just to hit the high points and then we'll get into the example. Uh, an organization that wants to have a presence on people's mobile devices really has two choices. <coughs> and I'll I'll jump to the end of the book and give you a spoiler. All right, they're going to take both strategies. All right. Uh, the two different strategies are, number one, they can have an app, and number two, they can make their website compatible for mobile, mobile devices. And they're going to likely do both, because there's advantages to doing both. All right? Um, mobile devices, um, it sort of simplifies the experience if you have a mobile application. If you want the weather... You just click on the weather channels icon on your phone, and boom, you have your weather. Whereas, if you visit the weather channels uh, website, you have to open up your web browser, go to that URL, and so on. can be more involved experience to do that. Uh, mobile applications can be optimized for, uh, for a given platform. For example, there's iPhone and there's Android versions of the application, and they can take advantage of some of the unique characteristics of the device. <coughs> that being said, there's something about like not having to download an application, right? Um, where you can just go to the website and get the information without having to have it take up space on your phone. Um, it's amazing to me how every time I get a new phone, it has a certain amount of space and it seems like, oh, that space will last me forever. And then like a month into it, you're full and like, oh my God, what am I going to do? All right. So by having it as a mobile website, you don't have to take up any space on the, the client's device. And you don't have to worry about developing a different version for Android and for, uh, for iOS because it's just a web page. As long as they have a browser, it'll work. All right. Um, so there's advantages of doing both. So for our purposes, We'll say that both are going to be strategies which are going to be employed. Now, sometimes websites are so complicated that um, you want your mobile website to look drastically different than your desktop website. Uh, if any of you have like gone to eBay on the phone or on the web, you'll see that they look a lot different. Or Amazon, for example. All right. Uh, it's possible to use the same code to, uh, to create web pages that look different simply by changing the CSS. In some cases, in other cases, you actually have separate web pages, depending on whether you're accessing it via a, uh, a, a, a mobile device or a desktop device. In this class, we're not going to learn about having separate pages, all right, separate code for mobile versus desktop, because that involves a lot of server-side scripting. We are going to look at writing code that will work both on a mobile and on a uh, desktop device, all right? Um, that will involve a couple different things. Let me show you what I mean about having pages that look different on a mobile versus a desktop device. So let me pull up. Amazon. <coughs> All right. Here's Amazon on a mobile device. I hope it shows up right.
can kind of get a sense of what it looks like. There's a search bar up here. Yeah, there we go. All right. And there's a banner and so all that. But there's essentially one column for it. If we go to Amazon's desktop page, we'll notice that, be careful spelling, All right. Actually, it sort of looks almost exactly the same. It's just written in such a way that um, it handles it both for a desktop and a mobile device. The one thing that's a little bit different is when we get to the very bottom of the page, on the mobile version of it, those links in the footer are only two columns, whereas on the desktop version of the page, there's four columns for those. All right, but it's actually the same page. How do I know it's the same page? Because when I look at it, I see the address as being Amazon.com, and you have to sort of trust me there. What do I do before I sort of wave my hand and cast a magic spell? Boom. Well, whatever. you have to trust me on this. Compare that to eBay. If I go to eBay, that's what it looks like. If I go to a mobile version of eBay, somehow it set the contrast right. I don't know. You have to believe me here or have really good eyes. The address up in the bar says m.ebay.com as opposed to when you go to the regular website it says ebay.com. All right. That's actually different code it's running. It's actually directing you to a different website if you're on a mobile device versus a desktop device. So that's sort of two of the strategies that you can take. One is you can write one web page that handles both, or one is you can write two web pages, one that handles mobile, <coughs> one that handles desktop. Uh, I should be able to type in m.ebay.com and see what that looks like. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, no, it redirected me, but you know what? I can go... And I can run it through the emulator. Yeah, what am I thinking running it, holding up my phone and all that? I'll just do this. CISS division it actually pays money if you if you give a good answer. They'll, they'll like give you a buck or something. I'm not one of those professors, so <laughs> sorry. Uh, also, some give extra credit points, and I don't do that either. But yeah, this is an excellent idea. Notice that there's a difference between how it looks. And if you look, this is m.ebay.com. This is www.ebay.com. So essentially, that's your two choices. Have two different web pages, one for mobile, one for um, uh, desktop, or have a web page that's smart enough to handle both. All right? Now, um, we're not going to cover two different web pages. Two different web pages is simply two different web pages. You create two different 
HTML or more than likely server side script uh, and you write a different CSS. We've already learned a lot of what you need to do to create a web page that looks good in both. We're going to, the, the keys are, are doing this. Um, because if you think about it, what's the difference between a mobile and a desktop device version? Mobile is going to be simpler. We have multiple columns here. We pretty much just have one column on the desktop or on the mobile version, whereas we have multiple columns here. Notice that we don't show quite as many links on the mobile version. So we show less data. In general, because of the size of the screen, because of the speed of the connection, and so on, your mobile version of the site is going to be simpler than the desktop version. So single column is going to be good rather than multiple column. All right? Uh, and so on. Now, we've already talked about pages that adapt themselves to the size of the screen. And that's called responsive web design. And what are some of the characteristics of that? Number one, we use percentages and not absolute numbers. So we're not going to say that the width of something is 500 pixels. We might say it's 50%. All right. So one of the things that we want to do, get used to, to make our web pages look better in a mobile device is to give a percentage uh, for the width instead of an absolute number. We might use a minimum width, all right? We might say the minimum width is 400 pixels or 600 pixels or something like that. But we're going to avoid using absolute numbers, all right, other than maybe specifying a minimum. We're actually going to do that with images, too. We can make images a percentage of the size of the screen. So if the, size of the screen is bigger, we can make the image bigger. Or if the screen is smaller, we can make the image smaller. So that's something else that we're going to do. So not just paragraphs or sections of the page are we going to give a percentage to. We're actually going to give a percentage for um, uh, images to and other content. If we do that and if we float our stuff, if we use a floating slash liquid layout, we can very often create one web page that will look good even in a mobile environment, especially if we put a couple of extra things in. Let's pull the prototype that we had from last time, and let's see who came in late. Austin, right? All right, and anyone else? I think I might have gotten everyone else. All right, let's look at the prototype that we had way back the last time we met. this in Google Chrome. That is one of the prototypes we had. We view this in a mobile device mode. It's going to look not bad, but it looks a little small. Is there anything we can do to do that? Yeah, there's a command that we're going to put in that specifies the viewport that will help with that. do something like this. I won't upload this example because the viewpoint is 
in one of the other examples we're going to cover today. So there's no need to upload this, I don't think. All right, there you go. So it makes it a little bit bigger, all right, for a mobile device, that viewport command. So you want that viewport command to be in just everything that you do. I, I actually changed my mind. I will I will upload that just to, to make that um, work, work better. Let's look at some of the, one of the other, well, we'll leave it at that. Well, no, let's look at one of the other prototypes and... Let's add that viewpoint into these as well. one doesn't look too good even with the viewpoint command come in so we'd have some work to do on that one and we definitely have work to do with two the point is is adding in that viewport command can help quite a bit in what you're doing all right let's look at the example that I posted um, of mobile it's not elegant but it shows um, the ability to apply a different style sheet if it's mobile. Um, notice that this one, by the way, this one looks good in both the desktop and the mobile browser, and there's only one CSS file. So that's one approach, is to create your CSS file so that um, it looks good both in a mobile and a desktop environment. So that's a possibility. The other thing we can do is we can actually write two CSS files and apply uh, that uh, as needed. So let's look at this example here. And we can do it from two different directions. We can either have our basic CSS style it the way that we want to for a mobile device and then add stuff in for a desktop device. Or we can have our main style sheet style it the way we want it for a desktop device and then take stuff away if it's viewed on a mo mobile device. So we're going from two different ends. We can either write our basic page for the desktop and then trim away stuff that's not needed on the mobile, or we can write the bare bones mobile page and then add stuff for the desktop. Generally speaking, that second approach is the one that you want to take. You want to start out developing the mobile site first and then add stuff in that you want to be on the desktop, whether it be extra content or extra styling or whatever. You would use the other approach if you already had a website that wasn't mobile compatible, like many websites around the world <coughs> are. A lot of people developed websites a while ago, and um, many of them might not have made any enhancements to it since, uh, or made limited enhancements to it since mobile devices became so popular. So you have some websites that are very difficult to use in a mobile environment. All right. If you're going to convert one of those and try to make it mobile compatible, you already have a full version of the site. You would then write the code that would trim away the stuff 
that you don't want on the mobile version. But if you're developing anything new, do mobile first and then add on. That technique is known as progressive enhancement. And we're going to show just sort of two levels of progressive enhancement, where we have a desktop version and a mobile version. You can actually take progressive enhancement a lot further than that, and you'd have a bunch of levels. You could develop a version for a flip phone, for example, because remember, flip phones can still browse the web. You can then develop a version for a smartphone. You can develop a version for a tablet. You can develop a version then for a full-fledged computer. We're only going to look at the two cases, mobile and desktop. All right? But with either of these techniques, you have things that are called breakpoints, and you can set those things in and say, well, in this format, this is what we're going to do. All right, let's look at the example that should be there last week. Um, probably this one. Okay, so notice under mobile we have progressive enhancement and graceful degradation. Progressive enhancement means we start out with the bare bones mobile site and we add stuff in to make a desktop site. Graceful degradation is the opposite. We start with the full blown desktop site and we take stuff away to make the mobile site. All right, let's look at progressive enhancement first. Now these are, these are not award winning pages by the way, just as an FYI, so. All right, this is a page that's meant to be uh, full-blown for a desktop site. I'm going to view that same page in a mobile browser. I feel like a magician here. Nothing up my sleeves. But if we look at this, I view the exact same page in a mobile browser, and it looks a lot different. Let's play spot the differences. You know, like those games that they give you when you're a kid. Here's two pictures, spot the differences. Those used to really bug me when I was a kid, because like the differences would be so small. But I guess if the differences were so big, then it wouldn't be any fun, right? Anyhow, the differences between the mobile version and the desktop version. Desktop version has a background. Mobile version doesn't. Desktop version uses a serif font. All right, notice the M has the little dealies on the edges of them. Those are called serifs. So this is a serif font. This has a sans serif font. Notice there's none of those little dealies on the end of the M. So different font. This one has the navigation stacked vertically. This one has the navigation stacked horizontally. This one has three columns, at least to start. This one has one column. This one has a picture. This one doesn't have a picture. So. There's a fair number of differences, about a half dozen or so differences. They're pretty obvious. And yet it's one web page. So how do we do that? We do that with something called a media query. All right? We can build into our CSS rules that say when a certain CSS gets applied. That's called a media query. You might have noticed on some websites, if you go to print a web page, the printed version of the web page doesn't look exactly like the web page that you see in the screen. All right? Like if you go to a web page and you print a news article. Uh, again, there might not be as many images in the printed version. There might not be as many colors. There might not be background images. There might not be ads. It's more simple uh, when you get a printed version. Same idea is in place. You can specify the style sheet that's going to apply when you print a web page. All right? 
Here we're specifying a different style sheet that applies with the um, uh, when we're on a mobile device versus a desktop device. So let's look and see how that works. All right, notice a couple things. I have the viewport in there, which I've said that you need to do all the time for mobile devices. I have these two things that we talked about before, but I don't know if we actually saw an example of them. We saw a Firefox CSS file, and we saw the HTML5 shiv. So this would make those pages work a little bit better on very old browsers. We're almost at the point where we really, really don't need that, at least here on campus, because we have new enough browsers where that's not an issue. But notice what we have. We have two style sheets. One that's called base and one that's called desktop. Which style sheet applies? Well, sometimes one style sheet applies, sometimes both style sheets apply. You can actually write a web page that has two style sheets in it. All right? And there's reasons where that comes in handy. Reasons besides this. This is one big time when it, it comes in handy. But even so, you could write pages that have a couple different style sheets. And which one applies? Well, they all apply. All right? Now, what happens if there's a conflict in style sheets? Like if one says that the, back, the page, background page, uh, uh, the background color for the page is red and one says that the background color for the page is blue. The second one wins. So if this style sheet said red and there was another style sheet that said blue, the one after it would win. And that's how it would work. All right? Now, the only catch to that is notice that we have something else here. We have what's called a media query. This specifies rules for when this style sheet applies. So this style sheet applies all the time. No matter what you're using, you're using a Nintendo DS, you're using a flip phone, you're using a phone, you're using a desktop device or a laptop or a tablet. This style sheet applies because there's no media query on it. There's no description of when it does apply. This style sheet applies only in this case. And it, takes us, so it will take a second to decipher what this says. If wherever you see media equals, we're specifying the rules under which this second style sheet applies. This style sheet will apply if we're viewing it on a computer screen, <coughs> not a mobile device. So that's what only screen means. That this style sheet applies when we are dealing with a computer. minimum width is at least 600 pixels. 600 pixels would be a tiny monitor. That would be a monitor back from 1990 something. All right. The reason that that's put in there is back in the old days, sometimes the phone lied to the web browser. And even though it was a phone, it told the web browser it was a computer screen. All right. You didn't realize that phones were so dishonest, do, did you? But back in the old days, phones would sometimes misidentify themselves as computer screens. So we build our CSS smart. All right. So if it if it tells you that it's a computer screen, but it's only 600 pixels wide, we know that it's really a mobile device because that's a very 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 small screen. This is something that is a carryover from the old days. We probably don't need that anymore. We could probably just say only screen. 
So let me put comments in here. <coughs> what are comments in HTML? We can put descriptions of what our code does. And we can put them in with doing this. So this style sheet <coughs> always applies. This style sheet only applies on desktop devices. This style sheet and I'll put it in quotes because it doesn't really do this, but it sort of fixes old versions of Firefox for HTML5. And this code sort of fixes old versions of Internet Explorer for HTML5. I don't put a lot of comments in my HTML, but sometimes it's good to do that, just to explain to you so that you have an easier time coming back and, and, and understanding that. I mean, it's not obvious why we have these different style sheets this sort of explains that to you. So, let's look at this. And we're going to first look at the base style sheet. And then we're going to look at the style sheet called desktop.css. So if we look at the base style sheet, that's this guy here. The base style sheet says the font is Helvetica, which is what? A sans serif font. We say the header, the, the header takes up a width of 100%. The nav takes a width of 100%. Nav li display is inline. What does that mean? Nav li display inline. Someone did it with their, pointed with their finger. It means it's going to go horizontal. Inline remembers being side by side by side. So those navigation links that we're going to have that are going to be in an unordered list in LIs are going to go horizontal. We get rid of the bullet points by saying list style type none. We make the sections worth a uh, width of 100%. And we specify that any images within the section display of none. What does that mean? It means that they're invisible. So the images are not there. So if we view this in a, desk, in a mobile version, that's what we get. Everything's 100% width. So the header, the nav, the sections are all 100% width. The font is sans serif. The navigation links are, or, are oriented horizontally. And as we notice, there's no images here. The thought being that on a mobile device, maybe we um, would want to save bandwidth. Although that actually wouldn't save bandwidth. Because um, it's going to download the image and just hide it. All right. But it would save space on the screen and make the screen display simpler. Now, that style sheet applies all the time. So everyone gets that style sheet. This gets that style sheet viewed on a mobile device. This gets that style sheet viewed on a desktop device. What's the difference? The difference is this. That if we're viewing it on a computer screen that's at least 600 pixels wide, this style sheet will also apply. And because it is second, this style sheet will overrule the first one. So remember, if you have 
style sheets that conflict with each other, if you have two style sheets that conflict with each other, the second one wins. All right, the second one overrules the first one. So let's see what is overruled in the desktop version of this. The body tag, the style rule gets overruled. We change the font family to a serif font, Garamond and serif, and we add a background image. So that overrules the rules that we had in the mobile version or the base version, which said that the font's Helvetica and we didn't specify any background color or background image. Navigation, we make a width of 30%. Minimum width of 200 pixels float left. Nav Li, we make the display block and not in line. So the navigation is 30% instead of 100%, and the links are oriented vertically instead of oriented horizontally. In the desktop version, we make the links be white. So here, no color, they're, so they're blue, a default color. Here the links are white. We make the sections each have a width of 30% with a minimum width of 200 pixels <coughs> float to the left. And then finally, each image we make display of inline with 100%. So it will make the image 100% of the section that it's in. So notice as we make that image, uh, make the browser smaller, that image gets a little bit smaller because we've used a width for the percentage of that. Whereas it doesn't display at all in this. So that in a nutshell is progressive enhancement. We specify a bare bones style sheet, then we create a second style sheet that applies for desktop that has some additional formatting in it. Graceful degradation is just the opposite. We have a style sheet that displays, that has a lot of stuff in it, and then we take away stuff in the second style sheet. We'll look at that one quickly. Here it is in the desktop version. Here is the mobile version. If we look at the style sheet, notice that responsive is first and then mobile is covered and in the mobile we take away stuff so in the one version we have all these different things going on and in the mobile version we take away stuff from it so we get rid of the image we get rid of the borders and so on So, for one of your assignments, I'm not sure which one, um, you have to create a, a page that looks good uh, on a desktop and a mobile version. And you'll do that, more than likely, by using progressive enhancement. You'll style the mobile version first to be very simple, very bare bones, and then you'll create a second style sheet which applies on a desktop device. All right, And you'll use that to uh, add additional features. You would use a graceful degradation if you already had a completed website and you wanted to make it look better on a mobile device. All right, your design is due next week, if I'm not mistaken, for your project. Um, I hope you are aware of that. I hope at the very least you're aware that you have a project this semester. All right. Is anyone running into problems with their project? Of, of any kind of nature. Not sure what to do, not sure what topic to pick. 
I mean, be honest, you know. I try to be honest with the class. Be honest with me. Is the plan this due next week? The plan is due next week, right. Remember, the plan consists of those four parts plus a prototype. So you have a Word document that contains the four parts that we talked about in class that are defined in, uh, in the document uh, online uh, and a prototype, which means sort of a rough draft. It doesn't have to be finished and polished, but sort of a, a, a rough draft of the project. Other questions? Mike, so if you were, this can be related to the project or unrelated. Um, when you're doing a mobile site, um, instead of percentages, would you be able to use EMs and have the same effect with those or? Well, EMs and percentages roughly mean the same thing. Yeah, that's what I thought. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's just a, it's a different way to describe percentages. Okay. Because um, that's what I've been using, so I just want to make sure. Yeah, uh, yeah what, what, is, what is not good is to use absolute numbers. Okay. So in other words, with fonts, you could say 15 PT for 15 points. You wouldn't want to use that. You'd want to use 1 EM or 2 EM yeah. or something like that. Yes? I was trying to install a custom font, uh -huh. and I was having trouble with that. I couldn't figure it out. Okay. That might be something we can look at individually in lab. You can do that if you don't want to use one. If you have a very specific font that you want to have and you want to make sure that that's available on all machines, yeah, you can you can actually install a font. Other questions? All right, next time we will pick up talking about accessibility. Remember today I sort of gave the quick reader's digest version of uh, of mobile devices. Uh, please view the videos that I posted last week to get uh, some of the additional information. We'll pick up next time talking about accessibility. And I will also answer any other questions that you run into in doing your design. All right. I will go and unlock the lab, then I'll be back to the